My Real Sociedad side has not signed players for years because of some serious financial difficulties. And as a result, we had zero budget to start the season. So this is how I made a bunch of signings with no budget and have helped the financial system at least a little bit. We are predicted to finish fifth this year, which would be incredible considering that we finished in eighth place last season. Champions League places are a serious push for us this season, and we're hoping to do exactly that. And the new signings that we brought in for our second season, our first full season with Real Betis, sorry, Real Sociedad, oh my gosh, I'm going to get crucified in the comments for that, um, is certainly going to help us along the way. We have made a ton of signings, but first I'm going to go over the sales because this is how I literally had no budget, aside with serious financial troubles, and I've managed to sign a bunch of players. Spoiler alert, a lot of them are free signings. But if you guys are excited for that, please smash the like button, as well as subscribing to Rex of your YouTube channel so you don't miss more Football Manager content just like this. And can we please smash whatever like target you can give me today, and let's jump into it. Starting with the sales, you will notice a lot of players are going. And uh, from here on, is when I made the sales. Mendes has left the club, and you were thinking, mate, he was a good rotation option. He had no rotation option. His wage was about £105,000 per week. Instantly, I knew I needed to get rid of that, so I sold him for, what, four point three point eight million pounds Very happy with that. Diaz, a youngster, £250,000 in the bank account. Lorente, a youngster, £800,000 in the bank account. £500,000 for this youngster, £1 million for this youngster, going on to what we did, at, well that was at the end of last season, but you know, still technically the start of this season, um, £5 million for this youngster, then we got £3 million, £2.5 million for this youngster, and the only really decent player that I sold was £10 million for this winger that I just didn't think was going to improve a whole lot, so happy to get a good fee for him. So, as you can see, I dipped straight into the youth development. I dipped straight into the B team, into the C team, into the under 19s, and just sold every single player that I could see that I didn't think was going to turn into anything special. I did not get rid of a single player with four star potential or more, because that would just be stupid, because, you know, they could turn into more valuable players in the future. Bearing in mind, I also got so much wages off the, off the bill. For some reason, some of these players had like. £50,000 per week contracts and there's no wonder this team was in financial trouble so we just got so much money from that so much money um, being brought in from the transfer fees and wages that have been saved so 17 million plus 6 million we had about 23 million pounds plus wage budget I'd say we probably had like 30 to 40 million and uh, a lot of that was spent on free transfers and first of which being a CDM, again, like, if you remember last season, we had no cover. No cover. We had so many youth players in the reserves that it was just ridiculous. We brought on Mendes and um, that winger that we sold and um, and one striker. That was, that was basically all we had on the bench to deal with. So now we've got a central midfielder option. Not too bad at all. Um, we then went on to bring in the centre back, who I actually think is probably the best signing that we've made from the free transfers. A centre back from England, who has actually come from uh, Liverpool, free signing, only paying him what fifty twenty one thousand pounds per week. Oh my gosh, that's a deal. Eighteen tackling, six foot three, seventeen jumping reach. He's going to score some go goals from corners this year. He looks great. I think he was a brilliant signing. More cover coming in with the mayor. Um, I think two-star current ability is a little bit harsh. I think he's better than that good winger option for us. Um, then we brought in another centre-back, Seta Dini. Uh, then another right-back, Matty Cash, 33 years of age. And bear in mind, we are signing these guys for like £20,000 a week. I'm not picking up anyone for like £50,000 unless you're going to be a starter. It's just That would just be stupid. Then a new striker who the two-star current ability, again, I think is a little bit harsh for. £13,000 a week. Can't complain with that. Um, and then another centre-back. I did go a little overkill on the centre-backs. If you remember last season, we were really lacking in the centre-backs. So now we've got plenty of centre-backs. Um, so this one comes in as a 22-year-old. Very happy with that one. Hoiberg comes in as a reserve option as well. 
And last but not least, Tiago is probably the biggest signing because the only one we've actually spent money on, not the only one I plan to spend money on, but the only one we have currently spent money on. £12 million for a player that has really, really shown that he is decent in the Brazilian league. Three caps for the Brazilian national team at the age of 23. And uh, I'm actually going to play him, <laughs> ironically, as a centre-back, which sounds stupid because we already have a bunch of centre-backs, as I have said. Uh, but I think he's going to do an amazing job there. If you compare him with the other centre-back that I would think about starting, Montero, who, by the way, I'm actually thinking about selling because we just have so many centre-backs, he's not even going to be a starting centre-back, so it makes sense to get rid of the centre-back. And if I say centre-back one more time in the sentence, it will be a serious world record centre-back. So if we compare him to Thiago, Thiago's just better in, in almost every way. He's the same height. Um, the mental's better, the physical's better. Like it's 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 a no brainer for me. He's got to be our starting centre back. So yeah, he's he's starting at centre back for us, and I'm very happy about that. And I'm very happy with the team, even though we do actually only have one new player starting in there. I think that the reserves was such a big issue for us last season, and that that's really what I wanted to improve, and that's exactly what we have improved. I would like to have a couple of more central midfield options now in hindsight like i wish i didn't sign so many defensive players like um matty cash uh, arana was the other one i kept, uh, kept a hold of actually so i forgot to mention him he was a reserve that we actually used last season uh citadini um to to todo rovich i don't know how to say that sweet i've totally just paused myself mid-sentence there because i needed to cough but uh, i don't know how to say that swedish name and i apologize but he's gonna hopefully make some appearances mingueza i feel like mingueza kind of is all the center back cover we we really need but the other ones are decent so i think if we get rid of montiero uh, for like 25 20 million pounds that would be a great thing because i do want to make some more signings and with the budget that we currently have i could probably make one more but starters really do need to be signed at some point. And Robbie is definitely a man that I want to sell. He is uh, tough to sell, though. And I know you're thinking, like, he's a good striker. I only want to sell him because he w he was refusing to sign a new contract. Like, I will I will sign him again, uh, but he won't sign a new contract, so I want to cash in while I can. But that... that, that um that that wage it's it's meaning that he's rejecting so many teams i got a 30 mil offer from inter he rejected them i got a 30 mil offer from uh club bruges he rejected them and then a 40 mil offer from psv and he's just rejected them so we need a big hitter to come in for him uh, another thing that i'm just going to whinge about for a second this player amazing would love to get this guy as a new centre back, and I know I don't need more centre backs, but for 9.6 million pounds, this guy's a bargain. Why? Because you're like, I get that you're at the Saudi League and you're earning a lot of money. I get that, but why would that then mean that you are going to? He wants 300,000 pounds per week. You know you're not worth that. You know you're only getting that much money because you're in the Saudi League, like. And that's way more than you're getting in the Saudi league. Like, you can't like Saudi Arabia that much that you need £200,000 more a week to move to a top European side. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, it's, honestly, it happens all the time in football manager, and I'm sick of it. Just because they're in the Saudi league. Like, I can understand why if they would want the same amount of money, but they shouldn't want exorbitant amounts more than they're earning. Like, it, it bothers me. It really does bother me. But anyway, the first game of the season is going to be played in today's episode against Valencicano, Valicano, Valicano, I'm definitely saying it wrong, I apologize, Valisano, maybe, Valicano, Valicano, Valisano, I don't know, um, pre-season was average, but I'm still sticking with the tactic that went well for us last season, uh, then we're going to simulate to the end of the transfer window, and then we're going to simulate to the start of the January transfer window, so the end of the December, and uh, that's the plan for this episode, this is the team that we're going with for it. As I said, oh, actually, no, sorry, two new signs. New centre back period, which feels dodgy, but we're going for it. And um, the rest of the team is the exact same. Siddiqui keeps his spot right back. Vasquez keeps his spot at left back, despite a lot of bids for him. Um, but I just I didn't think we'd be able to sign a bit of left back, so keeping him. Damsgaard, Kubo, who was a star last season, Brobby. And uh, then we've got uh, Ander on the left hand side. I'm going to need to lock that into my brain because he is. Got a last name that I cannot pronounce, I'm sorry. Um, so, we're jumping into it. Give this man number 33. Don't know if he'll make too many appearances. Again, like, 
they will pay their wages for a year or maybe even like half a season and then sell them on for money. So it's not a bad idea at all to sign a ton of players from free transfers. But, you know, I, I probably could have invested it better distributed amongst positions because like half of our reserves right now are center backs. But again, we've definitely improved the side in terms of depth. And I think the first team's better too. Everything's better. Tactics had more time to gel despite the fact it didn't go very well in preseason. But I'm feeling good about this first game of the season. I think that we've been given a team that we can beat comfortably here. And with 70% position early doors, it is looking good for us. And the first highlight coming after just 17 minutes, whew, it is looking good here. It is probably on the ball. He does lose it, but I back us to win it back at some point very soon here. It is on the right-hand side. They clear it long. Tiago picks it up, showing that he is going to be a good centre-back for us. If, if that one situation is anything to go off. And it gets it on the left-hand side. Back to Vasquez. Vasquez is looking for a ball into the mixer. Finds Nico, though, who knows how to put a ball in. But actually just finds a man on the edge of the box. He takes a shot, and it's just danced over the crossbar. Would have loved to see that go top corner. But it does certainly look like it's all us here. So much possession. No shots from them. If this highlight is their first shot, I'm going to be gutted. But I don't think it will be. I think that we'll win the ball back and we'll have the opportunity. No, we won't. It is Mara, and he's actually scored. It could be inches offside, but that is, um, that's nerve-wracking. Please don't be a goal. It is a goal. Okay, well, um, against the run of play, they've made it 1-0. First shot of the game. We now need to score goals, and it's making me panic about the, the tactic. 68% position, and it's just... Well, I was saying I was happy with it two seconds ago, and now I'm saying I'm not happy with it, and that's because, well, we conceded, haven't we? I thought the position domination was going to lead to... And now they have another shot, and that's the highlight. That's It's not even our highlight. Now I'm pa I'm absolutely panicking here now. Uh, three shots, and they're just not going up. Four shots. Okay, there we go. You've set all my nerves just a wee bit, but come on, mate. There's so much position. We clearly need a better way of, of getting into the actual danger area. Uh, Dan's guard, I think, picked up a knock somewhere in there, so I'm going to have to bring him off, and we'll bring... Oh, who can even play on that right-hand side? Alonso can. Can he? Can he? Yeah, yeah, the man from last season that made a few appearances. Actually, I, I've got him transfer listed. I, I don't think I want to have him transfer listed at the moment, actually. I think that was a bad decision on my behalf. Halfway through a game, he's getting told he's taken off the transfer list, um, and he's going to be brought on, you know what? Oh, maybe Demir... Nah, Alonso. Alonso can come on on that right-hand side. Is he left-footed? No, he's right-footed. Uh, I'll play this. Kubo on the right-hand side. Um, positive mentality. The, uh, the, don't panic. Don't panic. He backed the tactic. It didn't do well in preseason, though. But let's hope a team talk in one substitution is enough. He has a bit more oomph in the second half. And the first highlight looks like it is going our way. It's Kubo running into the mixer. Alonso has it. It's, surely there's got to be a shot there somewhere. Vasquez puts it in. It's dancing around. I think that's the highlight. I honestly think that we just saw the highlight. Alonso gets a block shot in the end. Yeah, that wasn't a great highlight. Am I going to demand more already? No, it's been seven minutes, Rex. So calm your fun. Calm your fun. We can't start the season with a home loss against this team. In these conditions, like, see, this actually does make me feel better about the tactic because our XG is so much higher and our shot to higher. But the finishing touch is just not coming here. We intercept. Nico's on the ball. Highlights coming our way. And it's Lee on the ball. I love, love the fact that his name's just L.I. Lee. He must have some... I feel like that's an Asian name. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I definitely feel like that's an Asian name. So he could have something. And then there's Brobby onside. I don't think he is. I mean, I was proven wrong earlier in this game when I thought someone was offside. But I definitely think he's offside. No, he is onside twice. I've been proven wrong. And normally I'm really good at making those shouts. So I'm absolutely stoked that in this situation I was not right. And you can see, yeah, that is really tight. But I can see how he's onside. I'm not even watching the replay because we've got no reason to worry about that. No, he's onside, onside. It makes it 1-0. And, and now you do feel like we're probably going to push and try and get that last goal to get all three points. Like one point here. With the, with the way the game's played, it feels still feels like a loss, eh? Uh, so let's get Hoiberg on. Uh, does he still have the ability? No, I don't think I want him as the box-to-box. -box. So let's get Nico as the box-to-box. -box. Um, Lee is looking tired. I am actually going to have a geese and see. Uh, let's get Minguizo on, actually, because Mon Montero is on the transfer list. Has he got some Asian in him? Information, not happiness. No! Okay. 
L I Lee. Uh, um, English name apparently. Irish in them too. Might be an Irish name. I've, I've never seen it before. Um, all right. Uh, well, I guess Asian Lee is L E E, isn't it? But that's English Lee too. So no, I'm confused. I'm confused. No idea. Um, apologies for that if anyone was offended by my presumptuation there but I feel, I feel like that was a fair enough call to make here is Bobby and maybe maybe just maybe he's not going to be sold and Kubo gets the assist and we've saved the first game of the season I panicked halfway through you all saw me panic um, but now I feel a whole lot better now that we're 2-1 up there's a great ball into the mixer you, you need Kubo to be there for the those moments of magic. And uh, we've even scored again, and Thiago scored on his debut. A great free kick from Alonso, who is not a man I would have picked to take a free kick, but he's hit the crossbar, and Thiago's just there to take up the rebound, tap it into the open goal after the goalkeeper's made a a bit of a stupid dive, actually. Like, the ball's just gone just above you. You wouldn't think you'd need to... I think it's just a weird animation, but you know what I mean. Like, it didn't look natural, uh, but we're going to get some more players there. Debuts here. Gigovic. Gigovic, sorry. Um, probably prefer Hoiberg as the box to box, even though his dribbling's not quite there anymore. And let's get Siddiqui off and bring on... I think I back Tod Todor Todorovic. Todorovic. I can actually say that. Todorovic as a, a centre-back option ahead of... Uh, Sita Dini, who doesn't quite look as good, but still looks good, but like not quite as good. And I like the fact that he's young too. So Todorovic is going to come on for his debut too. Um, Mingueza going out onto the right hand side, and uh, I think the win is confirmed and a, a deserved win, but a shaky win at times. So I'm stoked with that second half performance to pull it back. We clearly just outdid them, out ability, and um, three points to start the season. And signing is going to be coming very soon for you guys. So I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Hopefully we continue winning games, and hopefully we've made some great signings. We've got a new man up top, and now we're trying to complete forward. And as the man that I've targeted for a long time, all the way back in Bournemouth, I found this guy through scouting, and he looks great. It is Al Rema. Al Rema. Aurema is what we're going to go with. Please let me know down in the comment section below if I'm saying that wrong. But Aurema is what we're going to say. And here's a Brazilian striker that has just come in from Celtic after a great season of 18 goals from 37 appearances. He, uh, he didn't have the best debut, coming off the bench, a bench after 45 minutes. And um, I feel like he missed a sitter in a nil all draw against Celta Vigo. But hey, it is what it is. And at least we're still undefeated from two games. It's not a terrible start. Would have loved to have gone two wins, but yeah, it is what it is, as I said. Um, in terms of the signings or sales, he was the only one that we made in terms of signing. Oh, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, nah, sorry. Sorry, backtrack. We signed this absolute gem for only £1.7 million. He was on the transfer list for Barcelona. I saw his stats, and I was just like, he is definitely better than a £1.7 million player. Decent first division player. Um... Those stats there are great. The pace is decent. Uh, the potential is decent. I think he's a really, really good pickup for so cheap. And I think we'll sell him for a profit in a couple of seasons' time. Um, and we actually went on to sell two more players. One player here who I just re-signed. So I didn't think I'd be able to sell him. But I was actually quite happy when I, I saw he was wanted. So I was like, oh, you know what, offer him out. And uh, sold him for a cheeky wee two mil there. Cannot complain about that. 41 mil we brought him in for. Oh, this team's so bad with money. Like, even the Marrera guy that we sold, um, 20 million. Like, it's no wonder we're in financial trouble. Um, anyway, and then Prieto, who I feel kind of bad selling for just one mil, but he was winding down his contract, and uh, yeah, he wasn't good enough. Even though he was our young player of the season, I don't back him. So now our team's looking like this. Almira, Al, Al, Rima, Al Rima, sorry. Al Rima is going to be starting up top. Um, Brobby is potentially going to be fighting for that first team spot. I mean, it, it gives me good options. I've taken him off the transfer list because no one wanted to sign him. But I have found something that I feel quite good about. Um, I have an extension clause if I want. So I have a feeling there's no way I won't be able to sell him. Like, he can't wind down his contract for three. Like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, within those three years, surely I'm going to get a bid that I can actually cash in on him, even though his wage is going to go up by another 5% next year and the year after that. So, oh, that's so bad. 
it'd be 10k an extra 10k so you end up at like 125 ish at the end um or 130 ish which isn't great but um yeah it is what it is and hopefully we can sell them before then uh if not uh we'll let his contract wind down and yeah well he's a good player he's a good player like he actually potentially should be starting but i do, I do think that Aurimar has a little bit more about him like if you compare the two of them like there's some seriously huge stats in the way of Aurimar like I, I I prefer him I definitely do prefer him um so we're going to be starting him and we're going to hopefully be scoring some goals with him oh did I mention he's six foot six uh so that's lovely too and we're going to simulate until the end of either footage as well until the end of December as I said play this game against Real Madrid hopefully win it and hopefully we'll be in the Champions League places when we come back I'm pretty happy with how we've done this season, considering the fact that I think early doors I was panicking a wee bit. Now I feel like we've definitely smoothed out and found a, a, a tactic and, and things that are just working very well for us. So as you can see, like throughout a lot of games, a couple of losses that we shouldn't have been picking up, but we have certainly found our feet again, as I said, around this time. Um, the 3-0 loss was not a worry. It's the Spanish Cup and I played my second team. I mean... I would have still liked to have won it. Um, this uh, this game's probably the most frustrating one. Three XG, and they score in the 90th minute to equalise. We could have gone into just about Champions League places if we won that game. But it is what it is. Uh, another thing that I'm slightly concerned about, by the way, uh, is that players that I want to sell in this January chance window have plummeted in value. Like, Brobby has gone down to about 15 million pounds which is absolutely gut-wrenching uh, alonzo's asked to leave a lot of people have asked to leave by the way uh, and he's plummeted in value um who else has asked to leave this man's asked to leave and okay he's actually about the same value who else there was one other player that did oh yeah and um bar the, the ander who is actually playing pretty well at this moment in time his form has increased but he has also plummeted in value by like 20 mil and he's interested in by Real Madrid and Chelsea. So that is exciting for the next episode. But in this episode, we need to round it off with hopefully a win against Real Madrid. Uh, I'm going to very quickly go over to the tactic that we have been using. I thought that the game was ready to go. Obviously, no transfers, no updates in that area has occurred. Um, we're completely out of budget anyway. So I don't know how I would have managed to do that. But the the tactic has been tweaked very slightly but the the general idea of it is basically the exact same um roles have been changed as well because it just seems to have I, I think i changed it for one game and it just happened to improve it so now that's what we're sticking with but i, I really hate it when i start recording i'm not actually ready for the game i genuinely thought i was ready for the game are we ready for the game we're still not ready for the game now we're ready for the game uh, this is the tactic that we're using this is the team that we're using and surprisingly Damsgaard has probably been the best player in our season. Five goals, four assists. He started the season terribly. I took him out of the squad and then he started being amazing. Um, and uh, Orima, he's not been quite as good as I would have wanted. He's missed a couple of guilty chances. He's all right, though. He is all right. He's definitely good enough for this level. He just needs a little bit more luck. Like you can see, his XG is 7.88. So hopefully if he bagged a couple of more of his good opportunities... He would have some more goals. Um, so I, I still back him, but yeah, maybe not the the world class striker that I was hoping he would be straight off the bat. So I think the only thing we've changed is we've gone rid of be more expressive. Floated crosses is now on. Uh, just then the width depending on the team that we're versing. So right now uh, we're versing Real Madrid, obviously, and they play with a four three three. I'm pretty certain. Yet four three three. So to try and combat that, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go more narrow. I'm not gonna go you know wider i'm just going to keep it at fairly narrow i mean I'm, if it's not working i might go narrow um but i'm going to keep it at fairly narrow i think that's the right way to play i, I think i remember it was rio betis that we versed that were going with a 4-1-2-1-2 formation i want to say yes and so we went more wide in that game and dominated them as a result it was a great tactical move by me there um we're just distributing to center backs and i think that's all the same so still the wing backs as well uh, but now with a ball winning midfielder and a deep line playmaker here as well as an advanced playmaker on the wing I just couldn't really get the best out of this left wing position so I did that and it seems to be working okay Robbie was playing inside forward for a bit but wasn't he, he was all right but I think I, I I prefer having him as a option off the bench and, and to be honest I'm wanting to sell him so I'd rather give some game time to people that we're actually going to play 
Uh, Montiero has been out with an injury, so Minguez has been into the starting lineup, and he's looking really good. But I will certainly sell him if a bid comes in for him for anything more than about fifteen million pounds because he is getting old. But I've talked for long enough, and we're going to verse Real Madrid now. Um, it is a, a tight affair. I'm expecting. I, I do definitely think we're going to be in it more than we were in that Barcelona game that I showed you at the start of the season. But I still wouldn't put money on us getting the win. We're in good form, and they're in a similar sort of situation to us. Well, no, they've got a lot more points than us. But, you know, like they're, they're not hugely miles away from us in the in the table. So it's definitely winnable at home. But uh, they, they just have so many good players. You know, like Simmons, Leonardo, Vinicius Jr., Valverde. Like I've, I feel like I've versed them before on camera. We know that they're a good team. Um, let's just hope that it's our day. And with two shots and 47% possession, it's not a bad start. 25 minutes gone, and it's seeming like a bit of a bland affair. Jal Pedro's coming in for um, Javi Simmons because we've picked up an injury to him. But the first highlight could be coming our way as we are attacking side. Nico into Damsgaard, and he actually, oh, I really should be finishing that. Well, I say really should be finishing that. That's He's done incredible to control and finish that out. Take a shot, sorry. But... Oh, once you get the control in, you'd think you would put them in the back of the net. Al, 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 Al Remar, I'm still not certain if I'm saying that right, miles offside there, so I'm not even getting excited, even though that would have been a tap in if he was onside because of the fact that it came off the post and perfectly went into his path. But we're definitely outplaying them here, which is amazing to see, because at the end of last season, I'm pretty sure, is when I versed Real Madrid. And if memory serves me correct, we got slapped, because I know I've definitely shown you a a Real Madrid game on camera. I'm pretty sure this is the first time we're versing them in this season. Or was it? Was it? Oh no, it is. It, it was this season. Yeah, two 0 two 0 And um, yeah, it, it, I I think the XG was huge. Like, yeah, yeah. No, we got slapped. So the fact that we're in this game significantly is an awesome improvement from the start of the season, and just shows that the tactic is clearly doing a job. Because at one point I was definitely a bit panicked about it, but I feel a lot better about it now, especially with this result looking like it's going to be okay for us. But this is the issue. They can hit us on the counter-attack, and they have very good players. We do intercept it, though, to be fair, so this could still be our highlight, but you do have to be careful. You know, Vinicius Jr., he's got the dribbling skills to get past all of our players. He's got the pace to get past all of our players. You know, it's going to be a, dic a difficult one to see out for 90 minutes to keep them quiet. I definitely think we're going to concede a goal at some point, and it might be here, and it is here. I don't think there's a problem with that. Marcus Leonardo runs straight through the middle. The ball comes over the top. It's a lapse of concentration after a great first half that I was really praising the boys for. And with their first shot on target, they've scored a goal. Uh, I'm going to tell them they've been unlucky because I really do think that they have been unlucky. And statistically, they absolutely have been unlucky. So if we keep going the way that we are, uh, surely we're going to get a goal. And surely we will keep knocking on the door and potentially even get that second one. Vasquez is on it. He's looking for a ball into the mixer. Out, out, out. I have no idea how to say it. Al Rema, I have to look at his name to say it, um, is, is very tall, so he could be winning those headers. But I don't think he scored a single header this season, but gives him the opportunity to do so. And here is actually a man, Ander, coming in to finish his dinner after Damsgaard gets in again. And it really does put a good shot on target against Courtois, but it just scrambles out over to our player. And it's an easy tap-in to make it 1-0. And as I said, if we keep playing the way that we did in this first half, it was going to come eventually, and it only took five minutes in the second half to come. Very happy with that, and I'm not, I'm not actually unhappy at all that he scored against a team that's interested in him. Because to be honest, I don't rate him that highly, and I will absolutely sell him for something around like sixty mil. That is, yeah, that is a very tidy fee for that man. Uh, Damsgaard's injured, so I am going to bring Renee on, who has scored one goal, but I still think he's got a lot in the tank. I think he, he's really good on paper. So I think he's a great impact sub. I, I'd argue, I, I feel pretty torn between bringing him and Bro Brobby on at times, and that and that's saying something because Brobby really does have a shout at starting in this team. And here is Almira. Al, 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 he scored. I don't. Did I say his name right? Alrema. Alrema. He has scored. And again, like he's he's not scoring all the time, but he just does pop up and get a goal here and there. I mean, is a world class striker a great thing that we? could possibly need in the future definitely could this man be it potentially to be honest you know if he, as i said if he finishes the chances that he gets he's absolutely going to keep getting better and better 
and a goal there against Real Madrid to put it 2-1 up is a great way to start that run. Come on, a positive mentality against the side, and we're doing well. Mate, this is a great thing to see. And they, they don't seem to be coming back into it. With only 12 minutes to go, I'm going to have to make some midfield changes just to keep the fitness up. Thiago has been knocked out of the centre-back position only because I don't really think he is the best centre-back. Oh, and Mon- Montero, his, uh, his, his uh, value has decreased hugely as well, so I'm definitely not selling him, especially considering the fact I actually do think he is a decent centre-back. Rotation or starting, he has been starting at time, but Minguez are playing well in this game. I'm not going to bring him off. Um, Vasquez is looking tired, so I will bring on the more defensive-minded uh, Swedish man that we have, uh, Pre- Predag, I have no idea how to say his um, last name. Actually, no, I've said his last name before. It's Todorovic. It's, Tudor- it's so easy to say. Um, I don't know why I'm panicking about a, a name that's, well, it is long, to be fair. It looks difficult to say, but it's, it's, not, too, it's not too bad. But play him as a fullback, I think that suits him a lot more with his centre-back qualities. Don't score here, don't score here. Oh, great block by Mingueza. And that is actually stopping them from getting a goal that could lead to one point for them and two points being dropped for us. They made a lot of substitutions now. They've got some seriously fresh legs. Endrick's come on. Timber's come on. We've got to ride it out. I'm not making any more substitutions. Three minutes of additional time. The first one's flown by. The second one's flown by. And we don't see a highlight. And we get the win, boys and girls. That really does show a huge improvement from the start of the season to where we are currently. I'm so proud of that performance. I cannot... I actually just can't believe that we dominated the Real Madrid side, which is amazing to see because obviously at the start of the season, in the last season as well, we couldn't compete with those kind of boys. You know, like the Barcelona game, a 4-0 slapping. And yes, I know we're at home and I know we're in good form, but seventh place side right now, mate, we could be pushing some Champions League football. And I, I believe we're not looking like we're going to fail financial fair play. Look at that. I didn't realize that. We've like completely recovered the club situation. Actually, at one point we had profit going on. Boys and girls, not only have I fixed the club's financial situation, I've fixed their tactical situation, I've fixed their form situation. This move to Real Sociedad has been an amazing one for this series and I could not be more thrilled to be continuing this save with this team. They are a great team and we're going to take them even further by making some signings and definitely some sales in the January transfer window, and I will be back when that is all wrapped up. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all later.